Welcome back sa ating channel. We are finally here back to talk about these gaming laptops that we unboxed before. Supposedly, this video is last year pa, 2021. Pero dahil nga po sa personal reasons, medyo natagalan na po and it's now 2022. Anyway, a lot of videos are already uploaded online about Intel H45, how good is it, and it's now quite competitive market na pagdating sa mga gaming laptops as of now. Not like before when AMD 4000 series was released and the competitor or the competing model of Intel is the 10th gen talagang sobrang inferior ng Intel back then. Pero how close is it? And did Intel manage to beat AMD this time? Yan yung aalamin natin with this video. And this will be the first part. It's a bit more on the CPU focused yung ating review or yung pag-uusapan natin. At the same time, it will be more about that H45 and also how these processors, i9, i7, compared to the Ryzen 7 or Ryzen 9, 5000 series mobile game laptops. Now with that being said, for more videos like this, feel free to subscribe. This video is brought to you by SCDK, the best website that you may visit in terms of uh, very affordable deals and best offer para sa application softwares, games, and yes, operating system. And there you are, you may check the Windows 10 Pro and by using our promo code, ma-avail mo lang siya ng around $14.95 or 700 plus pesos. That's it mga kaibigan. Check the description below. May mga links po tayo dyan to go directly sa kanilang website. Now since this is the first video that I will release about these gaming laptops, let's clarify first what is that H45. The general market ng mga gaming laptops is uh, not as enthusiast level as those desktops. Kaya medyo mas isi-simplify natin ng konti for the local market. H45 is the 45 watts TDP gaming laptops released by Intel. So that is the mobile processor. Ibig sabihin lang po niyan, with a more efficient power comes with a better performance. It delivers better performance. The H35 series was released back then. Pero they released new refresh models with H45. So now, 45 watts, higher wattage. And uh, at the same time, one of the things that uh, gustong i-highlight ni Intel is all about their mobile laptops with still thinner chassis gaming laptops. Kasi ka kadalasan pag sinabi mo kasing gaming laptop, mabigat, makapal. And uh, eto na nga po, these laptops are loaded with i7, i9, yet still thin gaming laptops with RTX 3080, 3070 video card. But is the temperature compromised? Yan yung alamin natin at the benchmark na ipapasilip ko po mamaya. Pero before we step onto those benchmarks, other things that Intel wants to highlight is of course the PCIe Gen 4 na wala yan sa kanilang counterpart na AMD 5000 series still using the PCIe Gen 3. More lanes of course that delivers a capability pagdating sa mga new gaming laptops ng Intel to have more NVMe support especially that PCIe Gen 4 NVMe. SSDs. Though, hindi rin naman ganun kalaki yung real-world performance advantage ng PCIe Gen 4 compared sa PCIe Gen 3, pero that is a biased opinion. That is depende pa rin naman sa usage. Though, technically, pagdating sa mga benchmarks, of course, PCIe Gen 4 significantly better in terms of performance pagdating sa mga numbers kung ipapakita yung mga benchmarks. And that will uh, be tackled on a different video. Pero, on the real world, as a personal user of uh, both SSDs, I don't see the difference as of now. That one second, two seconds difference, not a big deal for me. Anyway, let's skip to that. And uh, yes, another feature is of course the Thunderbolt support and other stuff that allows these Intel laptops to have higher wattage GPUs. That is why there are also benchmarks and reviews from other friends or tech reviewers that states that Intel is quite inferior onto this part. Pero since they got a better or higher GPU, the outcome of those laptops benchmarks over the counterpart laptop ng AMD platform are quite different compared dun sa mga mobile to mobile processor CPU comparison. Pero yun ang topic natin yun. Let's talk about first. How is the performance of these mobile processors compared to those AMD counterpart? Only one AMD counterpart. That is only the processor that I have as of now. But I think it's fair enough to use para i-compare itong three Intel laptops with just one AMD. Namatay to. 
Now let's move on pagdating sa benchmark and here is the temperature of these gaming laptops with the i7 and RTX 3080 ID64 stress test for 1 hour. Makikita po natin dito that the temperature is very acceptable. That is far lower than what we expected. Actually I'm expecting na sobrang magsa-throttle itong mga gaming laptops. Given the 27 ambient temperature is still acceptable naman yung kanilang temperature the GPU, the RTX 3080 and that i7 11800H same with the i9 with an RTX 3070. Very acceptable yung results given the envelope or the chassis na meron sila. Since Intel is boasting that their H45 will allow manufacturers to still have ultra portable looking gaming laptops despite of the top of the line hardware that is loaded RTX 3080 or i7 or i9. Now, still temperature depends on how the manufacturer designed their cooling system. So, makikita po natin dito that since they allow us to have the Aorus and the Acer Predator a gaming laptop, you see there that even same spec sheet ang meron sila, the Aorus is well performing far beyond the Acer Predator. And also, a bit almost on par with the Asus Zephyrus, though, yun niya, i9 naman kasi nakaload sa kanya. So, acceptable na mas matas talaga yung kanyang temperature. Now, with that being said, let's check some CPU-focused benchmarks, starting with Cinebench. As of January 2022, makikita po natin on multi-core performance, the Intel Core i9 is quite inferior with the i7-11800H that we have in here with the Aorus. Pero that was allowed with the Aorus dahil nga, kung mapapansin nyo po kanina, with the benchmark out of the box na ginawa natin sa kanyang temperature, mas mababang dihamak yung kanyang temperature over this Asus. Kaya when you observe the benchmark, it's quite higher pagdating sa multi-core performance performance yung ating Aorus. Pero, on the other side, on single core performance, you may observe here that the i9 is quite performing better compared sa 11800H. Anyway, when we compare all of these numbers sa ating AMD Ryzen processor, pagdating sa ating MyBenBen, which is a so-so brand, it's a new player in the market, kumbaga, I'm not expecting much that that laptop, or even it's loaded with AMD, magpe-perform siya over these branded ones that we have in here. Pero, Ryzen is Ryzen. It's still the winner pagdating sa multi-core performance and yes, inferior pagdating sa single core performance even compared with the i7 lineup. So dito natin ma-observe that if in single threaded applications like gaming, most likely they will take advantage that performance mas maging inferior yung ating AMD. Aside from the fact that naka-PCIe Gen 3 lang siya. Now let's move on because that will be on another video topic, yung gaming performance, CPU focus muna tayo. Let's move on naman sa ating Blender 3D. And still, we observe in here that these laptops are inferior sa ating AMD mobile processor. Wow. So if I may explain it right, pagdating sa mga architects dyan or uh, not architects because architects may mostly use those uh, GPU pagdating sa rendering. Those engineers that will be uh, most likely using Revit or maybe some architects also that will be using Revit and using the CPU power for rendering. We may observe in here that the AMD is still the better processor for your laptops compared sa ating Intel. Pero how much? And not like before that I've stated on the first part of the video that very inferior ang 10th gen over the uh, 4000 series dito makikita natin na it's quite competitive now if you may say that AMD is better than these processors or Intel processors yes, I may admit it right on numbers, we can't lie numbers don't lie pero how far? sobrang liit na lang yung difference nila. It's not anymore like before na sobrang talo talaga ang Intel. So, yes, these are provided by Intel laptops for me to observe. Pero I can also deny that these laptops are inferior compared sa AMD. Pero I may also state it na at least mas competitive na as of now. Monopolies not a thing that I really want to support. So, I still prefer a market with a bit more balance. Siyempre, in the end of the day, consumers pa rin na magsasuffer kung hindi ganun katight ang competition. And as we can see right now, sobrang tight na po. It's not anymore like before. As I may state it again, na sobrang layo. Now, lastly, is Adobe products. Adobe products are widely considered na sometimes pinagdedebatehan yan na mas okay kung mag-Intel ka, mas okay kung mag-AMD ka. Now, of course, we cannot end this video not talking about the Adobe products, especially Actually, na ang pinag-uusapan natin dito is CPU. So, we have here the Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Premiere, which is better now compared sa Ryzen 9 processor that we have in here. And when we run the Photoshop, makikita po natin dito that even with the i7, we are comparing the i7. Yes, it comes with the higher GPU, pero that GPU is not as significant pagdating sa Premiere. So, Photoshop yung pinag-uusapan natin dito. And makikita po ninyo that with i7, 11800H, Ryzen 9, the i7 is clearly the 
winner pagdating sa Adobe Photoshop. So for photo editors out there, I think Intel is still the go-to processor that you may still consider. Now, when we move on, pagdating naman sa ating Premiere, it will still be the same statement. Yes, it's quite biased because I just used RTX 3060 with that Ryzen 9 and these are loaded with RTX 3080 so you can have the benefit of the doubt. Pero I may also clearly state in here that given the single core performance which is better with the i7 and that 45 watts TDP, that we have already observed kanina pa lang pagdating sa Cinebench, expected ko na that these Intel processors will outperform that Ryzen 7 or that Ryzen 9 AMD mobile processor. And that is also something that I may speculate pagdating sa gaming. Pero since ang pinag-uusapan lang natin dito is more on the production side, so ayun lang muna yung mapapakita ko as of now about the CPU performance of Intel. So you already know me as I have already uploaded a lot of AMD, a uh, lot of good things about uh, sa mga desktop processors din na. And also, at the start of the video, I have also mentioned that Intel is really quite inferior pagdating sa mga multi-core performance. Pero numbers don't lie na Intel is also winner on some benchmarks. Kaya I just did some kind of balance for you guys to see. Not to find ways na ipakita sa inyo na despite all of the uh, stuff na pinag-uusapan na AMD is the best gaming laptop as of now, lahat ng mga AMD uh, processors kadalasan sold out dahil mas maganda yung kanilang performance. Yes, there are a lot of uh, people talking about those uh, laptops na talaga namang mas maganda yung performance pero on some point, on some uh, angles makikita din natin that Intel is also winning, especially that PCIe Gen 4 support, that more lanes, and yes, on uh, single threaded applications, or on the uh, side na ginawa ko recently na supposedly ang gagamitin ko sana because I want to create a virtual machine for my uh, Mac OS dahil may gusto akong i-upload sa Xcode, eh hindi ko magawa yun dahil sobrang dami kong kailangan kalikot pagdating sa AMD. And since medyo matagal na akong hindi nag-create ng virtual box to do some stuff pagdating sa aking mga daily work, hindi ko na pinag-aksayan pa ng oras na kalikutin yung AMD just to make that Mac OS work. I instead grab one of this laptop. Actually, I grab this Orus to upload or to create a virtual box for my Mac OS. That's the, uh, what version is that again? I think it's the Catalina version. So, ayun. Pagdating sa Intel, mas madali, mas seamless. Sometimes, I'm not stating because I'm also a personal user of Ryzen 9. And I also have a 12th gen processor in here. Pero there are things na mas comfortable lang ako pagdating sa Intel. Like when I'm creating some server, mas okay sa akin pa nag-Intel ako. Of course, VirtualBox, mas okay sa akin pa nag-Intel ako. Adobe products, of course. Those are just some of the stuff kung saan mas okay kung sa Intel ka magsisettle down. Except that if uh, ang processor na lang is 10th gen, of course, kahit na sabihin pa natin na mas comfortable or mas stable or sabihin na lang natin mas madali, pero given the fact that 10th gen are obviously on all the benchmarks, para production man yan o gaming, talagang inferior siya. Talagang hindi ko ibuboto. Hindi ko talaga pipiliin yung Intel. Siguro, I will just uh, exert more effort na lang to check what can I do for that AMD processor to work sa aking uh, project kung ganun kalayo yung benchmark. Pero given the fact that it's quite closer now with the 11th gen and it's now 10 nanometer. It's just like those desktop 12th gen processor has of now. Na before, yes, AMD is the go-to processors pagdating sa desktop. Pero this time, it's a different story. Just check my previous video how good those Intel 12th gen processors. So, whichever hardware performs better currently, dun tayo. Because in the end of the day, monopoly is not really good shit pagdating sa ating mga consumers. I'm sorry for the word. Pero ayun lang po ang masasabi ko muna. Abangan nyo po yung ating next video talking a bit more focused now with these specific models. Which of this laptop performs better? At the same time, how is the gaming performance ng ating gaming laptops from Intel? Now, with that being said, and for more videos like this, feel free to subscribe.